just to uh, clarify on the uh, comment about passenger rail, the House took the funding out, the Senate put it back in, so now it's on the governor's desk with the funding back in. <coughs> so it's a good thing, because it is a uh, very big priority for the Quad City business community to make sure that this corridor becomes a reality. <coughs> and that's really what it is, it's a corridor from Chicago through the Quad Cities on uh, westward, because where it stops, it can continue to go on, so it is a big priority. Phyllis, did you want another comment? Yes, you bet, you bet. Right. Come on up here. You guys are kind of sleepy looking, so we're going to kind of ramp this up just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you guys have heard about what's happened in Wisconsin, so I want to have a conversation about collective bargaining. I think it's important that we do that. And I think especially in this room we need to have this conversation because a lot of times people are on the east side, somebody's on the west side, and there's a middle that we need to have a common ground on. And the reason why I want to have this conversation is because each of us are affected by co uh, collective bargaining in one way or the other. Either <coughs> as business people, as labor people, as an employee, we all have that, uh, have that commonality. So, you know, when we think about this, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel about it so much. It's about what it produces. What does it do? Now, I have been a longtime union member. I have been a president of a union. I have negotiated several contracts. And I tell you what, there is this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful process that really does help you understand what is, what's happening in the place where you work. Whether it is <coughs> some sort of health care, whether it is um, hours of work, whether it is something that can help you do your job better, that's why it exists. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want to make sure we have, and I, I'm going to repeat this a lot, I want to make sure we have constant conversation about it. If, you know, when I, I said somebody's on the east side and somebody's on the west side, and depending on which side you're on, you know, you know what they're saying, what they did, uh, you know what they're saying over here? Okay, we need to come together to bring this to the middle so that we can have, like I said before, common ground on this. I talked to my friend, uh, Bill here, and he works at Exelon. I had a chance to visit them. He took me through his whole facility. It's absolutely <coughs> wonderful. I have never seen a place so wonderful in my life before. And at the end of the tour, he said to me, I want you to meet you with the first person. So he took me and the lady who helps with everything. And what was, what, what was her position? She was uh, the human resources manager. Right, human resources manager. Now, the wonderful part about this lady was that, and, and I thought, well, I looked at Bill and I said, well, Bill, why don't you introduce me to her? Couldn't figure out why you did that. I thought, okay, what's the big deal? You know, he said, this is the one person that keeps us honest. Okay, that was very telling to me. Very telling to me. It's not that people seek to be dishonest. It's the fact that we're held to a standard. And that standard is wonderful. So, you know, if we want to have conversation about some reform, on health care, about paying more for our health care. We know health care costs are going up, right? Right, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so we're gonna have let's have that conversation about health care. We need to have that conversation about health care. No, hey, don't don't shoot me. I don't mind paying for my health care. I really don't. That's something that I, I feel good about. I feel good about that. I feel good about paying for that. I didn't used to. Like everybody else I used to think, hey I got it for free. This is really cool. And so when they came back and said, well, that's what they were, of course I was a little upset about it. But then I thought, wait a second, I use it. I absolutely use it. So I don't have a problem with that, okay? Now somebody else might feel different, but my whole point is this. We need to have conversation about this. It is not about what I think about it. It is about what it produces. Now if it produces something good, isn't that the whole point? I would think it would be. It would be for me anyway. And so, you know, I wanted to have this conversation with you today, and I want, no matter what you think about it, I want you guys to tell me how you feel about it, but I also, at the end of this time today, I want you to go away and say, okay, I've got some good out of this, and I've got something positive, knowing that we had this good conversation. It, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily change your mind about anything, but if we don't start speaking about it, I really don't wanna end up like what Wisconsin. I really don't. 
I have wanted so that I have, we've always been a leader in almost everything that we've done. I want us to produce something great. I want us to keep moving forward. I want us to always have our eye on the prize. I don't want us to have this, this battle all the time. That's not what we need to be doing. We need to constantly just work hard. So enough of that, because I'll keep on talking. But I want you guys to just to, let's have this conversation today, and let's, let's uh, talk about you know, some of the fears, let's talk about some of the, the anxiety that you may have about it. And then once we, maybe we won't be able to dispel it, but let's just talk about it. Can we do that today? Yeah, yeah. all right, fantastic, thank you. And talking about collective bargaining, uh, Linda, do you wanna share anything that came out of the Labor Committee overnight? Well, <laughs> the bill, the bill, the bill. Well, the good news is, as you know, they, the, the, as you know, the process when you're in a committee and you're doing a bill is that the um, the majority party has to sit and listen to the minority party. That's part of the process, and they get to control the clock. And so, and they control the clock by putting on amendments onto the bill. They get to speak to each amendment. They get opening comments. They get uh, to make remarks about themselves. They get, they get to ask each other questions about whatever they want to ask each other questions about. And it goes on for a long period of time. And we started out at, at 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Then we went to, at three o'clock, and then we went back at five. And basically, then we were there until six o'clock this morning, doing seventy-four amendments. And um, I don't know about any of you, but if you sit in one spot for twelve hours, you got to put your feet up, otherwise mine swell. Because <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're sitting in one spot, you got to put your feet up. For me, you know, otherwise my feet will be as big as uh, elephants when I get done. But anyhow, so you. The process is that it is not a debate. The majority side does not debate the minority side. The minority side gets to just add amendments. Any amendment, all amendments, lots of amendments, and you talk, and they, then they get to talk to the amendments for a long period of time. The crux of the process, though, is that you do have to sit and listen to each other. <coughs> and, um, and you may not agree and there may be a bill that comes out that may not have a lot of agreement to it, but at the end of the day, um, the process does work. And we haven't done anything with Chapter 20 for a long time. It's very <coughs> difficult to talk about Chapter 20, which is the Iowa Collective Bargaining Bill, um, because both sides are scared to, to open it up, because they're, each of them are afraid that the other's gonna get some kind of advantage. Basically, what the bill did, though, was, um, and I want to I want to make sure that I quote this exactly right, the major changes to the bill include the ability of public employees to opt out of representation by the union. Um, <coughs> although we're going to probably drop that because in the process of negotiations that was probably the most contentious part of the bill. Um, uh, allowing the state to control what portion <laughs> state employees pay for insurance. Basically that's the point right now is health insurance. 84% of the public employees do not pay anything for their health insurance. <coughs> um, they pay no premiums at all. So, and then the, the really the part that I think is the most the, the neat is the arbitrator, if there is an arbitrator, which right now must either choose side A or side B, there's no middle ground for the arbitrator. Um, this would this would allow the arbitrator to compare public and private wages and benefits when possible. Currently, the arbitrator does not have to compare the wages in the private sector. And then um, the arbitrator can come to a position somewhere <coughs> in between A and B. He doesn't have to pick A or pick B. He has a choice of a, of a companion, which gives him a little more choices. Um, and also, it doesn't force the arbitrator considered past bargaining agreement. And so out of the, I think there's 17 bargaining, uh, mandatory <coughs> bargaining uh, uh, the, uh, categories, salaries, vacation, all that kind of stuff. We only were talking about two all night. So um, we are not gutting chapter 20. We are just trying to tweak it. And what comes out in the end, <coughs> I have no idea because we have a Democratic Senate that's not going to like anything that we passed. 
and I think in the end, um, hopefully we'll have some really productive discussions about public employees paying um, some portion of their health insurance. So I'd, I'd welcome any questions. Uh, okay, as we venture into the uh, question and answer section of this uh, uh, day, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Lance Stockwell. Lance is the chair of the Iowa Legislative Task Force. We always like to leave a little time at the end of this to open up the floor to any questions that you have about anything that was talked about by our legislators or any other topics that you have that you'd like to address today. I know we're running a little late on time, but I think that it's been good conversation today. Uh, does anybody have a question or a comment? Let it regarding chapter 20, just for a second. Has there been any conversation by the majority party uh, with the union?